Okay, good day. So what I will be presenting today is the paper entitled Populating an Ontology for Climate Change and Its Impact on Marine Life. So we are Justin Andre Chua, John Gabriel Legaspi, and myself, Natalie Rose Ling Cheng. So in this presentation, what I will be presenting is, uh, I'll start first with an overview. So there are actually many changes already in on the climate and it has affected are affected the world in many ways and one of the organisms that are uh, really affected by it are the marine organisms and their habitats so there are many research already that are being done uh, by different scientists and they publish their work in different journals or, or conferences now the problem with that is that should uh, scientists we looking at analyzing these data, they will have to read through all of these data, map out all the uh, comparisons that they see, uh, and the changes can, can also come across over time because of the effects of climate change. And it will be very difficult to uh, make some analysis. So they will have to do all those uh, readings first. So our task, so we thought that what we could do is actually create a repository for all of those information. Now, there are already existing repositories like the Fish Base and Ocean Biodiversity Information System. But most of these are, of course, just about the marine, marine creatures, but not necessarily in also including uh, effects of um, climate change or global warming. So what we have decided to do was to create our own, own ontology, and this is what we have come up with. So we have uh, consulted with uh, experts on the domain uh, and uh, the effects that we see most of the time uh, on, on documents are the effects of climate change on a certain habitat rather than directly on the organism. So that's why we created this ontology. Now to populate this ontology, it would now be tedious if we would manually populate them. So what we've decided to do was we would want to store them automatically and store them in something like this. So for example, for the um, uh, habitat, we would store the estuary. And then for, let's say for the marine creature, we will call it Chanos Chanos, and then it has a common name milkfish, et cetera. So this is our intention to now populate this ontology that we have designed to contain this information. And the information would come from the textual documents. So these are from the conference papers, from the uh, journal articles that the researchers have submitted. So uh, to do that, we would now need to use some seed data because the, the technique that we are employing here is called bootstrapping. So we would need to have some uh, in initial information. And this initial information is what we use to come up with more information. So the idea here uh, is to use sea data. So let's say we have now um, data containing marine organism and the common name. And this is, of course, for the relationship of has common name. And then we also have uh, is located in. So we would have information about the organism uh, and the uh, location. So they are stored in something like this that you see here on the right. So that's how we would uh, represent the data. So the first entity would let's be representing, let's say, the marine species or, or organism. And the second entity on the after the semicolon would be the location. So this is uh, the content for that file. And then we would have other files that will contain these information that we would be needing. So how do we do bootstrapping? So what essentially is bootstrapping is it uses the occurrence of the seeds that I have just shown you earlier and scans the collection of unstructured documents to collect similar data. So that means that this information, for example, we're looking at the is located in. So that means if I can see uh, there are samples that say, okay, coral reefs are located in Eastern Australia, then we would now have coral reef and Eastern Australia indicated in those seed data. And from the documents, we will have seed patterns. So let's say in a sentence that has um, coral reefs are found in Eastern Australia, then we now say uh, we can use as our seed uh, pattern are found in. Okay, So we also need to have that pattern. So I'll discuss more about 
um, the different processes in the next few slides. So this is the entire um, uh, components that we are going to, that we have created to come up with the resulting ontology population. So on this side here, this is just the interface to allow us to uh, allow the user to interact with the system. So essentially, once the user has already uploaded the documents, these documents are uh, PDF files usually that are that come from the journals that we download that are freely accessible. And once we have that, we use actually the PDF box. So PDF box is an available tool um, under Java. Uh, we can we can have an API for that to access the Apache PDF box to convert these PDF files to text documents. Now these text documents are just uh, automatically converted and therefore there are some things that are included there that should not be there. So we still need to perform some cleaning. So like removing um, the new uh, extra characters, extra new line characters, and maybe some of the things that are part of the title, we will not be using those anymore. Those that includes the, at the headers, we have the names of the authors. So we start uh, getting the information starting from the abstract. So from there, once it has been cleaned, the next thing that we will need to do is now, of course, they are stored in a repository and we will need to perform some pre-processing on them. For the pre-processing, we actually make use of the Stanford uh, for NLP. So these are existing tools that we are able to use. And the pre-processing includes sentence splitting, uh, name, uh, common name tagging, etc. So when we talk about sentence splitting, this is about separating now these texts that we have into different sentences. And we need to also, the, the, the splitting is via the use of regular expression. So we're looking for certain patterns to identify that this is at the end of the sentence. Now for common name tagging, so we need to tag each of the entries that are, let's say, marine organism is a common name. And then we also use the part of speech tagger to identify how we would know that these are uh, common names. Okay, so these are patterns that we see from the document. <clears throat> so this is an example. So we will see it known as milkfish, and then milkfish now is the, no, the, the noun. So there are patterns at the beginning. There are certain words, uh, prepositions, etc., that we are using to identify that these are uh, the entities that we're looking for. So we do that also for the other taggers like the location and so on, the species. And the other taggers that we need are also following in the same process. So um, we also need to do some name resolution because sometimes uh, the literatures will refer to the scientific names in different formats. So for example, there's a shortcut or an acronym that is used. So we have to uh, translate all of them so that they will look the same. And they, when they are processed, they're referring to the same thing. So these are just some additional data that we would need to get. So these are the gazetteers or the lexicons so that we know that these are the, the names that are uh, supposed to be used. So there are some keywords or key phrases that are used, especially for the effect, uh, so that we can identify that these are supposed to be the ones that are extracted for that ent entry. Now, uh, documents, of course, would be written in different ways by different authors. So we would need to perform some processing. So in the bootstrapping module, as we have said, so the idea is now we will be retrieving the tag documents from the repository and the seed data is uh, used to generate a possible seed pattern. So we are looking for the patterns. And then once we have these uh, seed entities in the documents, they will now be used later on. So this is essentially the main um, sequence of process that we go through. So we read through the tag documents. And then for each of the documents, we check it against the seed data. So the seed data are all the tuples that we have. So let's say for the um, uh, marine creature with the location, marine creature with their uh, common names, and so on. So these are going to be checked. So if there are any um, additional entries that are similar, then we are now going to add those in our um, properties. If there are additional relations that we see, then we would also be updating the um, 
the the seed pattern okay so we generate uh, the seeds also from these documents from the additional patterns that we see so again the patterns are based on certain parts of speech uh, but the parts of speech that we use for this set is based on an existing study so they say for example that uh, for those doc for those sentences that come in the form of the verb or verb phrase and the noun, then this would most likely be the pattern for something. Okay, so that's what we use as basis. So here, this is just an outline of what we uh what I have just stated earlier. So when we have already created this system, so we have to validate it. So because of uh, the limited manpower, so we only had, uh, we were only able to have three documents out of 18 documents uh, annotated, okay, and validated by the experts. So in this case, there are other documents that are not yet included uh, in, the, in the validated data. However, uh, we have followed a specific set of guidelines on how we manually annotated it, and this a guideline on how we annotated it was what was um, also verified and validated by the experts to say that we did it correctly. So now with these 18 documents, uh, we created a reference data and that's what we use to compare against the result of the, of the bootstrapping model, okay, of the bootstrapping program. <clears throat> so um, the we, we did this using three different tests. So the 18 documents, we split it up into 10 documents and 8 documents. So the first uh, 10 papers were processed so that we can come up with the seed data. These were the same 10 documents that we were manually populated uh, to, in the ontology so that the bootstrapping algorithm can generate initial seed patterns to come up with the seed output. Then we came up with the second test so that now there are additional, these additional eight documents are now used. So we want to see whether or not the bootstrapping model can actually, module can actually retrieve um, more data and more relations outside of the initial seed patterns uh, and seed data that we have uh, done in the first set of documents. And then using the same eight documents that we had, we uh, use it again on the third test, this just to check if we can get more data that would uh, that would be used for future processes. So these were the results that we got. Um, and in the first test, so we got uh, only 34.35 accuracy, 51.41 precision. So that's not really very, uh, sorry, this is already the second test. This is the first test. So the second test was not uh, any, uh, doesn't have any significant improvement and even for the third test. But we were able to now look at each of the entries and we were able to see that for, in terms of relations, we were able to get uh, the highest accuracy and precision on the marine organism and common name relationship. It has, it has common name. And the entries also for the actual classes those two entries will also have the highest accuracy and precision. So uh, it gives us hope that this, this particular technique might work, but of course we need to perform more tests. So the issues that we saw were actually pertaining to the pre-processing uh, uh, of the document where there are certain parts of the document, as you see here in the headers of the pages, they were included in the Doc, uh, in the data that we are processing, which should not be included, okay? Uh, and then also related to this, because of that information, when the Stanford NLP uh, was used to uh, identify the parts of speech, it also performed parts of speech tagging even on those information. And that's why sometimes the location that is indicated in the affiliation of the authors are included as the data for where the marine organism was found. So those are some things that we have found that needs to be improved. So we have some things that we need to uh, consider also as part of the other resources. We would also want to expand the ontology to include other data. 
and we would really want to have more experts to collaborate with to perform the evaluation and um, validation. So that's it. We would like to also acknowledge these people who help us in the study. Thank you.